going to edema what it is it is an tissue swelling due to increase in interstitial fluids it is an tissue swelling due to increase in interstitial fluids it must be differentiated from effusion which is accumulation of fluid in body cavities accumulation of fluid in body cavities is called effusion now why edema happens we we'll check it it is due to imbalance in hydrostatic pressure and colloidal osmotic pressure it is due to imbalance in hydrostatic pressure and colloidal osmotic pressure within the blood vessels both of these are called stalling's process this hydrostatic pressure will remove the water from blood vessels and this colloidal will draw the water into blood vessels when there is imbalance between these two it causes edema now going to different types of fluid in edema it is of two types that is inflammatory and non inflammatory inflammatory and non inflammatory inflammatory is protein rich exudate whereas non inflammatory is protein poor transudate inflammatory fluids are caused because of increase in vascular permeability whereas transudate is formed because of many disorders of heart renal or liver disorders going to mechanism of edema in heart failure there may be increased capillary hydro static pressure or decrease in renal blood flow that is decrease in renal blood flow and right. which in turn causes activation of ras ras is renin angiotensin system which in turn causes retention of sodium and water molecules causing increase in blood volume sodium ion causing increase in blood volume which in turn causes edema and also this increase in capillary hydrostatic pressure also causes edema meanwhile decrease hepatic synthesis of 
proteins in nephrotic syndrome causes decrease in plasma albumin causing decreased plasma osmotic pressure causing edema even in renal failure there will be retention of sodium in water and there also be edema in inflammation and in lymphatic obstructions both these causes edema edema may also be present in venous manifestations like dvt and also due to pressure effect in pregnancy or any tumors pregnancy or any tumors inflammation may also be associated with allergy as in case of angio edema caused due to release of inflammatory mediators like histamine then going to heart failure hepatic synthesis and nephrotic syndrome all these may cause generalized edema all these may cause generalized edema whereas inflammation venous manifestations and lymphatic obstruction may cause localized edema then going to clinical features to be seen in edema we must see first peri orbital edema this peri orbital edema is most common in renal diseases then we must check for jugular venous pressure first we should check for orbital edema then for jugular venous pressure then we must also check for blood pressure by sphygmomanometer then we should see for any postural hypotension that is decrease in more than 20 mm hg on standing in systole then we should also see for skin turgor that is the state of hydration of the skin by pinching the skin over the abdomen and leaving it and see for its springiness that is elasticity of the skin then we should also see for splenomegaly and hepatomegaly by palpation then we should see for any genital edema has in filariasis then we should check for ankle edema it may be pitting or non pitting pitting and non pitting this can be performed by pressing the thumb or index finger 
over the ankle or any bony prominence for 15 seconds. Then on leaving the pressure there will be an implantation forming the pit. If the pit is formed it is called pitting edema. If not it is called non-pitting edema. Then we should also check for sacral edema in bed bond patients then how to differentiate the causes of these edema edema causes can be differentiated by clinical examination itself that is in heart failure BC fitting edema and we also see increase in JVP that is jugular venous pressure. We also may be finding gallop rhythm. What is gallop rhythm? Gallop rhythm is an third heart sound which we may see in edema caused due to defect or heart failure then going to in case of hypo protein amia we see pitting type of edema with normal jugular venous pressure in hypoproteinemia we find pitting edema with normal JVP then in case of deep venous thrombosis we find pitting edema with local rise of temperature that is it will be warmer and we also find calf tenderness we also find calf tenderness then in case of lymphedema we find a special kind of edema called non pitting edema as in filariasis where there will be obstruction of lymphatic vessels then going to last case that is if the patient is obese due to fat accumulation it is also a non pitting edema sparing fits and patient is obese then summarizing the whole path we may see heart failure hypoproteinemia dvt lymphedema and fat can be differentiated on the basis of clinical features. Now going to a special condition that is pregnancy. During pregnancy we find fetal edema. Most of the times this fetal edema may be physiological or sometimes may be pathological. Physiological edema and pathological edema. Going for physiological edema, it is seen in dependent parts. That is in limbs, whereas pathological edema may be seen in non-dependent parts also. Like face. Whereas in physiological edema, it relieves on rest, but in pathological edema, there is no relief, and it physiological edema occurs at daytime, whereas pathological edema.
can occur at any time. Now, going to physiological edema, it is most common of the second trimester. But pathological edema can be seen at any time. Then, going for its laterality, physiological edema are always bilateral but pathological may or may not be unilateral or bilateral then going for treatment access of edema it can be treated by giving diuretics or compression stockings or by manual lymphatic drainage can be done this is the basic concept of edema thank you